Recently, K. Michelle has come under fire about her comments. If you missed my last video, make sure you go and check it out. But as I sit back and watch this whole thing play out, I'm very intrigued by the reactions that I see surrounding K. Michelle. Like right now, she's claimed that she's anticipating suing Mano for some disturbing comments he's made about her in the past and possibly still making. As a result of people like him making certain comments, K. Michelle has experienced a lot of online bullying and a whole lot of slanderous comments throughout her career. What's more disturbing is that so many women in the industry have stood by and watched all this play out, even laughed at the way K. Michelle was being ridiculed and attacked. It's strange to me for the simple fact that everybody by now should know that so many things come into play when it comes to being in the industry, especially when it comes to women. They have these images they have to promote. And people like to attach themselves to people's image for whatever reason. But when it comes to Kay Michelle, we all know about a lot of the things that she's publicly spoken on, considering the ridicule she's faced in the industry, considering the fact that she openly admits to sleeping around in her early career, and even the fact how she changed her body. But at the end of the day, as we can see, from the beginning of Kay Michelle's career until now, she has tried to reinvent her image. The problem is, it's always somebody somewhere lurking, trying to taint that image. So when it comes to what's going on with Kay Michelle now, I find the mixed reactions in the height of this Me Too movement very interesting. The industry promotes this over-sexualized imagery. And then, it's funny, the double standards. It's acceptable for men to behave one way. But when women behave the same way, they're labeled negatively. Is that right? At the end of the day, everybody has the right to choose to do whatever they want to do. But when it comes to private affairs, why is it so common for brown skinned people to one hand say this, this, net about their fellow person? And then when it comes to things such as police brutality, they want to say black lives matter. Everybody wants to riot. Everybody wants to be on the defense. Watch this clip and I'll come back for the rest of my commentary. For me, I don't know what's going on. I can't laugh with y'all. So we talking about smell, we talking about showers. Right, check this out. I don't care. I went (laughs) to the hotel with this lady. Okay. Okay? And this is my first time. And I said, damn, I want to do this. Right. I've been watching her. I've been watching her. I want to do this. She want to do me. Okay. Okay, we get in there. Things is happening. She no matter of fact, she going. To, she goes into the to the shower. We had the Trump over there when it was the Trump, Trump Soho. The Trump Soho. Yeah, used to be the Trump Soho. Right, it's not a Trump supporter. Right, I know in person. It's cool. Yeah, not Trump supporter. 
<laughs> right? But she came out the shower. I was like, yeah, it's about to happen. Right. And we we started to get in it, get into something. And then I was just like, damn, what's that? What's that, what's that smell? You said it out loud? No, I'm saying it in my mind. Okay. And I'm saying to myself, like, you you don't smell this? I, she, she never said nothing. I never said nothing. But it was so crazy that I that I was it was playing tricks on my mind. Right. I said, what the she don't smell this shit? This is crazy. I'm in here losing my mind. I'm saying, well, maybe it's me. Who was it? Who was it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't stop thinking of it Then he called me. Because now I'm like, like you got such me like, yo. You know who it was, too? No. He called me like, yo, that shit. Yo, y'all know who it is. That shit sanitation. Why y'all don't? Sanitation. And I'm like, nah, bro. I, I'm not going for that. When are y'all going to do that? Wait, wait, here's the, here's the, did you do it? Here's the Brooklyn shit. Here's the Brooklyn shit. Go back in. Make sure you ain't bugging. Yeah, I had to go back in. Just to make sure. So a second dip. I'll say the name. I went back in. No. No. So, don't, don't no. so this is Rick, round two or dip like, two? What we doing? No, Rick. <laughs> Rick, don't make me call name, you by your government. Name this tune. No. Oh, are Rick, this Rick, Rick, no. Rick, Rick. No, no, no. Come on. Come on. Do it. I'll do it. Rick, 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 it's a Rick, lot Rick, of things up in town. Wow. Really, I'm a girl. This is terrible. What is this? You know this ain't an ordinary love. We got something different. The story about her, so come on over, baby. We gonna light some candles tonight. Very special. No. Stop, cause I wanna join in. I don't know. They know the story. I bet you they know. No. I ain't wanna. I ain't wanna wow. get the regular hit. Wow. Wow. New York. Wait, 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 <laughs> do it do it wrong way. <laughs> this is totally no, bad. No, this is mad I'm disrespectful. Sh- no, like, no, 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 for real, no. Oh, I'm man. not condoning Whoa. this. I'm not condoning this. This is crazy, I'm man. not going to y'all. Very no, special. I'm not condoning this. Very petty group. This is a petty group. <laughs> this is next special. question. I didn't. Next we, question. But anyway. This is very like petty group. Like, like, okay. Wow. Wow. Well, See, that's not fair. Okay. Rick. Rick, you went kitchen too talk. far. Rick, Rick kitchen talk. you really went this too is far. Talk. You went too far. This is kitchen talk. <laughs> and she tried to, and she tried to stone on me like I want to go to funky ass house and I didn't want to go there. <laughs> Whoa! Kitchen talk. Somebody, he can't come. I wasn't going there anyway. I got a room at the uh, at the uh, so uh, the sofa tell. Why do I want to go there, sweetheart? Oh, wow. And Petty was a person. Yes. And Petty. Petty hard away. Right. He pushed the limit. Wow, that was. I'm a dick and get this lawsuit in January. Oh. Because everything I've been through, everything, and unping him out. I don't want him nowhere around me, Sabrina. I want the courts to handle him. In I January, you, you got you to you 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 make ever stick together as one. If you did or if you didn't, what right do you have to consistently get on all of your platforms and try to down somebody who tried to have your back, you know, who was your friend? What type of shit does that make just so you can get off on a mix? Not even an album, my nigga. A mixtape. You want to do this because of a mixtape. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking you to court for defamation. Because you don't know me like that. We cool, but you know. You did not sleep with me. You have no right to sleep. And I want every little piece of nothing you got. Big Daddy and people like that. It has been some men like, even, even if it was, thank you. Even if you still hit. Uh, even if whatever. Why does that matter? Why do you keep bringing this up every single interview? And you're so gangster. I've said not one word to him, y'all. I've let him go on for three years to the point my lawyer says, okay, enough is enough. You have enough defamation proof. You have enough proof of your mental anxiety that this has caused you. The same day that he wanted to put that out, my grandmama was in the hospital. The same day she got airlifted to the hospital. I'm looking at blogs, people laughing in my vagina, and my fucking grandmama is in the hospital, and you as a black man. If if, if something happened and I feel like speaking on it and giving my point of view on it, or just because this is what it is, I'm going to say it. So um, the K. Michelle thing was, uh, you know, I heard a few stories about K. Michelle, and as I was doing the yearly wrap-up, the 
stories that I heard about K Michelle was that her box thing. So when I made the yearly wrap up, I just said, "Um, I say shit that make niggas think." Five niggas told me K Michelle pussy stink, and um, that's what I heard. And, uh, I didn't expect her to like it, but I did say, "Um, I still hit it because you know K Michelle's, you know, she 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 got the look, you know, as far as her body, she got a nice body." It, it, it fits her nice. So when I said that the, um, you know, the box stick and the ad lift track, I said I still hit it. And um, you know, I guess she didn't like it too much. And uh, I see she had an interview. She was like, "Who the fuck is Uncle Murder? I don't even know him." Uh, yeah, I seen him on Love and Hip Hop, man. You know where a rapper's career going? That's on Love and Hip Hop. Like, I mean, that's how she got popping. If she want to shoot Love and Hip Hop down, I mean, cool. But um. You know, I, I made a, a, a cameo on Love & Hip Hop. I'm not actually a member of the Love & Hip Hop show like she was, but um, I made a, you know, my little appearance on there. And then I know she said something about I don't know the caliber of men that she was dating or some shit like that. And I'm thinking, like, who the fuck you dated Obama? Like, because I know a lot of um, people that's up there you know, one of the niggas that was fucking her, I think, um, J.R. Smith. That's my peoples. And um, a few other motherfuckers. I don't know, Memphis and all of them. I, I, I guess these motherfuckers must be bigger than Jay-Z because I was signed to Hove. That's my nigga. Um, Isn't that quite interesting? This person who has said something that K. Michelle feels is slandering her name on one hand says something negative about her, and then turns around and say he would still sleep with her. Does that make any sense? Do we see this type of double standard that goes on in people's mind? Sometimes people get offended by things and they feel like that gives them to right to offend others. Does that make it right? At the end of the day, when it comes to these type of situations, what difference is it for a girl to write a tell-all book and blast these celebrities than these celebrities getting on public platforms and downsizing women? Women they obviously were once interested in. K. Michelle once said that if she talked, a whole lot of people would be going to jail. And nobody ever questioned why she said that. Nobody ever followed up on that. I think she may make quite the witness when it comes to R. Kelly, considering around 2009, when one of these alleged victims claimed they were around R. Kelly, she was around. With that being said, how many people have heard that there's so many stories about women being abused in the industry. Not just now, going all the way back. All the way back. We've heard of men abusing women, whether sexually or rather physically. There's all kind of rumors out there. Yet for some strange reasons, when it comes to R. Kelly, everybody wants to take these rumors as facts. But when it comes to K. Michelle, I find her very interesting for the simple fact in so many ways she has exposed a lot if you followed her career. In this particular situation, you have to sit here and look at these men who attack her publicly online and ask yourself a question. What kind of man sits here and does this? Personally, I could care less what these celebrities do behind their closed doors. And I find it very distasteful to see men behaving the way these men in the industry do. They will put these women out there and want them to be so sexual and then use that as the perfect excuse to disrespect her. I feel like if K. Michelle feels like it's protecting her brand to take legal action against Mano 
and other people that she feels slandering her name, kudos to her. But what I think really needs to happen since people want to be on this women empowerment trip is the people need to, as she said, start opening those mouths and speak on those people, as she said, that needs to go to jail.